everyone, Grant for the Flame Learning Channel. In this video, you'll learn how to compare images when working in the timeline of the Flame 2021.1 products. This has many practical functions, such as online to offline comparison, video track comparison, and comparison to reference images. This is an essential task during most post production and will cover the functionality in depth with various examples. Please feel free to use your own material to follow along. So when you have a sequence in the timeline environment and you'd like to perform some sort of comparison, you need to enable the Viewing Settings panel through the Player Options pull-down menu. This gives you access to the comparison options. Now it's currently set to OFF and if you try choose any option, nothing will happen. The reason for this is that you need to define something to compare to the timeline. So as the first scenario, let's say you want to perform an online to offline comparison. So to add the offline clip to the sequence without disturbing the main video tracks, you create a new video version. Now take your offline clip in the media panel and drag it into the new version track. Now what you see in the player is known as the primary track and this is indicated by the P symbol. To compare this output to the other version track, you need to set a secondary track. In the Compare Controls, you could click the pull down menu and choose any video track to be your secondary video track. An even quicker way is to simply right click on the desired video track and set it as the secondary track. This is indicated by the S symbol. Once this is done, you're ready to compare the two tracks. Go back to the controls and click the pull down menu. Here you have a whole range of options to choose from. If you just want to toggle between the primary and secondary track, just choose the options or toggle between the keyboard shortcuts. If you go through the other modes, you can see you have a variety of choices as to how to display the comparison. You can also toggle the different modes via the menu or keyboard shortcut. And as an extra tip, each compare mode can be mapped to a keyboard shortcut, but none are assigned by default. Now before we look at some of the comparison modes in detail, I just want to address the subject of resolution. The main sequence is 1080 and the offline media is 576. In order to resize the offline to the resolution of the sequence, you need to select the offline clip and in the Resize Timeline Effects settings, change the resize to Crop Edges. So the offline resolution matches the sequence and you can toggle through the different comparison modes to compare the two tracks. When you scrub the timeline or press play, you can compare timings, matching frames and general creative intent. Now any video track in the sequence can be assigned as a primary or secondary track. Just by assigning different tracks as the primary and secondary, lets you view the output of the different tracks in the player. So you can see how this image looks with or without the animated filters. Now to help you identify what tracks you are using for the comparison, you can drag out the Timeline tabs and name the tracks. For example, I'll name the version track as Offline. And I'll name the topmost track in the sequence as Top Comp. The next time you go to assign the primary and secondary track using the pull down menu, you'll see the track names to identify the track. As a bonus, the track names will also appear in the effects environment when choosing to display or work with the video track. Now the other type of images you can compare with your timeline are grabbed reference stills. These are images you can store in your project and use them as comparison references whenever you want. So to set up an example, I'll turn off the compare tools and delete the offline version to simplify the sequence. To create a grab reference image, go to a specific frame in the sequence 
and press Ctrl G to save the frame as a reference. In the dialog window, you give the still a name and save it. Now move to another point in the sequence to do the comparison. In the Compare options, click the pull down menu, choose Grabbed References, and choose your named reference image. This enables the Compare modes and you have access to the same comparison modes that you saw earlier. Once again, if the resolution of the reference image is different to the sequence, click the pull down menu and edit the reference settings. Since the reference is not a track in the sequence, you need to use this menu to resize it. Now if you are working in the effects or batch environments, the resize capabilities are different in the viewports for grabbed reference images. So make sure you watch the video for comparing images in grading and VFX. Now if you have more than one reference image available for comparison, you can go through them in a number of ways. You can use the pull down menu, which will list the grab reference images. Or you can toggle a keyboard shortcut to navigate the references forward or backward through the list. If you want to see a larger version of the reference as you go through them, you can use a different keyboard shortcut and you can browse the reference images to ensure you choose the correct reference for the comparison. Finally, you have the Explorer, which you can enable by hiding the viewing settings and turning it on using the Flame Main Preferences or keyboard shortcut. In the References tab, you can double click on the thumbnails to quickly swap them in the player. So those are the three methods to cycle grabbed reference images in the timeline. Now for the final section of this video, I am going to take you through some of the configuration controls for each of the compare modes. It doesn't matter if you leave the Explorer visible or not, just go to the Viewing Settings using the Player Options menu. Now if you want to toggle through the compare modes, you can use the pull down menu or toggle the keyboard shortcut to move even faster between the different modes. Now each compare mode has various adjustments depending on what it does. For example, when using a compare mode like Blend, you can adjust the mix between the images with the slider. As a tip, if you press SHIFT T and drag on the image, you can interactively adjust the mix and keep your eyes focused on the player. The SHIFT T keyboard shortcut will also work in other compare modes for general adjustments. For example, switching to the GRID compare, you can change the size of the blocks using the slider or interactively with SHIFT T. The side by side mode does not need any controls. But if you look at the difference compare mode, SHIFT T will control the gain. And SHIFT Y will control the minimum, while SHIFT U will control the maximum. The lift slider can be mapped to a keyboard shortcut, but none is assigned by default. Finally, you have the vertical split, horizontal split, and the angle split. These compare modes all use an interactive split bar that you can move in the player. When it comes to the angle split, you change the angle by dragging on the bar, and moving the bar around by dragging the pivot point. You can snap any of the split bars to the cursor by pressing SHIFT META COMMAND and clicking on the image. All of them can be reset to their default positions by pressing the button under the compare modes. So that covers how to use the comparison modes when working in the context of the timeline. When using the compare modes in the context of VFX and grading, the controls are similar but they have been tweaked to focus on the specific tasks when working in those contexts. If that is something you do in your everyday production, please check out the video Comparing Images in Grading and VFX. 
Don't forget to check out the other features, workflows and enhancements to the Flame 2021.1 update. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel and click the bell to be notified for future videos. Thanks for watching and hope to see you soon.